This video will help you understand economic indicators to recognize economic trends and conditions. And we will start by discussing the measure of consumer spending as an economic indicator. So consumer spending is an important economic factor because it usually coincides with the overall consumer confidence in a nation's economy. High consumer confidence indicators usually relate to higher levels of consumer spending in the economic market. Consumer confidence provides governments and businesses with an analysis on consumer perception. In the United States, the Conference Board measures consumer confidence by conducting a survey of 5,000 households. Consumers respond to a few questions from which the Conference Board calculates consumer confidence. Next, we will describe the economic impact of inflation on business. So inflation is a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money, and constantly increasing prices leads to menu costs, where companies will have to spend money changing and reprinting their prices. But worse than that, it leads to uncertainty, making planning of production difficult. Prices need to be raised, and this infuriates customers who blame producers for increasing the prices. So businesses try to keep from raising these prices, but this squeezes profit margins and can cause companies to produce products that sell for less in real terms than they cost to produce. This, of course, is a recipe for bankruptcy in the long run. Explain the concept of gross domestic product, or uh, GDP. So, gross domestic product is the output of goods and services produced by labor and property located within a country. GDP is one measure of a nation's productivity or the output of workers in a given period of time, and the GDP is made up of several elements. Private investment, government spending, personal spending, net exports of goods, and change in business inventories. Two types of GDP are nominal and real GDP. Nominal GDP is stated in the price levels in which the GDP was measured, and real GDP is the nominal GDP adjusted for changes in prices. So to calculate GDP, you can add private business spending, government spending, and personal spending. Then, depending on whether you have a trade surplus or a trade deficit, you would either add the trade surplus or subtract the trade deficit, and either add expanding inventories or subtract shrinking inventories. And a similar measure to GDP is GNP, or Gross National Product, and GNP is the total dollar value of goods and services produced by a nation, including those produced outside of its own territory by its own citizens. Now we will discuss the impact of a nation's unemployment rates. So there are three main impacts of lingering unemployment on an economy, efficiency, inequality, and discouraged workers. So um, unemployment is inefficient in that it wastes human resources and it leads to inequality because those with the least experience tend to lose their jobs first, which are usually minorities and young people. And last, lastly, unemployed people tend to get discouraged about themselves and their abilities and may give up their search for work. Unemployment is an important indicator of the overall strength of an economy. The higher the unemployment rate, the greater the chances of an economic slowdown. Likewise, the lower the unemployment rate, the greater the chances of an economic recovery. When more people are working, more people are spending money and paying taxes to help the economy grow. Explain the economic impact of interest rate fluctuations. So, the lower the interest rate, the more willing people are to borrow money to make big purchases such as houses or cars. And when consumers pay less in interest, this gives them more money to spend, which can create a ripple effect of increased spending throughout the economy. Businesses and farmers also benefit from lower interest rates as it encourages them to make large equipment purchases due to the low cost of borrowing. This creates a situation where output and productivity both increase. Conversely, higher interest rates mean that consumers don't have as much disposable income and must cut back on spending. When higher interest rates are coupled with increased lending standards, banks make fewer loans. This affects not only consumers, but also businesses and farmers who cut back on spending for new equipment thus slowing productivity or reducing the number of employees. The tighter lending standards means that consumers will cut back on spending and this will affect many businesses' bottom lines. This will cause the business to reduce the number of employees that they have and hold off on any major equipment purchases. Determine the impact of business cycles on business activities. So, a business cycle is defined as a series of recurring changes in economic activity. And the four uh, main types of business cycles are expansion, recession, trough, and recovery. So during expansion, the economy is flourishing. It is a good time for businesses to start up or expand due to the increased output of goods and services. While recession is a time of economic slowdown. 
This can last at least two quarters. Uh, companies reduce their output during a recession and consumers have less money to spend on goods and services. A prolonged recession is called a depression. A trough is the low point in a business cycle. It marks the beginning of the transition from recession and depression to recovery when signs of economic growth are near. In the recovery phase, demand increases and businesses respond by hiring more workers and supplying more goods. And that's the end of the performance element that has to do with economic indicators.